We live in a fast-paced and hectic world where it's easy to feel overwhelmed, stressed, and out of control. How do you manage all the competing pressures without losing sense of yourself? How do you stay focused enough to not only plot a path, but follow it? Welcome to Master Your Life, a show that offers inspiration, insight, and intelligence, as well as success stories from many walks of life that can show you how you can control your own destiny. Our knowledgeable and entertaining host and her guests give practical advice that you can use every day in the quest to master your life. Now, here's your host, Leah Mattinson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Master Your Life, the show of insight, intelligence, and inspiration, where I ask you each episode to consider who is it you are right now and who is it you'd most like to be? What kind of life are you trying to create? What kind of human being are you aspiring to be? And is there just a little bit of space, a gap between that? where you are right now and who you're trying to be. And if so, then this is the show for you. I'm host Leah Mountinson and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Greg Bird. Thank you. <laughs> How are you today? Great. We're back in studio again. This is great uh, to be back. And uh, again, it's it feels like we're on TV. So here we are. And it's, uh, I have the honor today to actually introduce our special guest, uh, Dr. Sarah Thorne. So athlete, acclaimed acupuncturist, uh, loves to travel. Sarah, welcome. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here, you guys. We are excited to have you. And before we get into asking you a ton of questions, though, yeah. Greg's got to oh. share the meme of the day. Meme of the day. Meme of the day. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh -huh. So, we are, well, I don't know why there's extra garbage on social media today. Like, extra it's just garbage? Extra garbage. Yeah. <laughs> we, had to, we had to surf through oh. some good ones. So, yeah. um, <laughs> my mom's going to love this one. So, this is the story of the eagle and the crow. <laughs> are you ready? So, I'm going to show you like the eagle. So, there's the eagle and there's the crow on its back. So, it says, the only bird that dares to peck an eagle is the crow. The Kaka! crow. <laughs> <laughs> the crow sits on the eagle's back and bites his neck. And the eagle does not respond, nor fight with the crow, does not spend time or energy on the crow. Instead, he just opens his wings, begins to rise higher and higher into the heavens. And the higher the flight, the harder it is for that crow to breathe. And eventually that crow will fall off his back due to the lack of oxygen. Learn from the eagle and don't fight the crows. Just keep ascending. They might be along for the ride, but they'll soon fall off. Do not allow yourself to succumb to the distractions. Keep your focus on the things above and continue rising. Meme of the day. <laughs> That's a good one. It is a good one. Notice how Greg was able to actually completely rise above my crow interpretation there. <laughs> I tried my best. <laughs> it was nice. Uh, yeah, exactly. So well, we're excited, so excited to have you, Dr. Sarah, because you've, you know, done a million things in your life. But and as a, as a young lady who's just <laughs> out there in the world living it, uh, it's really inspiring um, to have people on that have overcome some things in their life and that are bringing some, uh, you know, truth and wisdom that isn't everyday truth and wisdom, you know, so right. you're an acupuncturist. What is, what's acupuncture all about? Cause a lot of people don't know. Right. So, I mean, acupuncture can mean so many different things to different people. Basically you look at it and it looks like somebody's just putting pins or needles into your body or into your skin. Um, you know, I have, I have perspective from a, a patient being a patient, getting it and perspective of being a doctor and providing it. So, um, you know, you look at it as a more Western approach or a more pain-based approach to a more Eastern approach where it, it could mean anything from managing pain to potentially just managing the body and the meridians and the energy, which I think a lot of people understand as chi. So, you know, acupuncture is not straightforward when it comes to the experience, which is quickly becoming my favorite practice and um, quickly becoming one of my favorite topics of conversation lately, um, especially with my patients and with, if, with both you and, and Greg, Leah. So it's, um, you know, it's something where a lot of people probably think they know what it's about. And, and some people don't know much about it at all. Like Greg's mom. Hi, Greg's mom. <laughs> Hi, Greg's mom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, you know, I think it's important to understand why you're going or, or what you, you want to get out of it. 
um, and maybe being very open to understanding that maybe you're going for one thing, but you might be able to experience something totally different. You might be going for stress and relaxation, which we're seeing a lot of right now with 2020 and 2021. Yeah. So, you know, and maybe understanding that you might feel more relaxed or you might feel less pain, but when you get off the table after your treatment, being able to really reflect on how your body felt or really focusing on the mind body experience and how to quiet your brain and, and how to focus on, on yourself and, and what it's actually making you feel. So, and I know Greg's probably really good at that. He's, he's impressed me with his experience with acupuncture. So, Well, it's amazing. And I was, again, just to give you some context, I actually want to share two very specific stories. And I'll tell the first one first was my first attempt at acupuncture. And it'd be years, I think I've walked there 38 years before I actually decided to maybe try this. And it was a time in my life where I just, you know, I just felt like everything was going kind of wrong. I got out of a terrible relationship, like work was just kind of bumping along. And I'm like, there was always this little sushi place right beside my office. And I went there one day and I'm looking across and I could see like, there was like a little acupuncture clinic there. And I tell you, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try this. Like, I know I've, I've talked about it. You see it on your group benefits plans all the time. And I'm just like, I'm going to go try it out. So wouldn't you believe it? I went, had my sushi. I finished up my lunch and I walked over and opened the little door. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and there's a little man in there. Dr. Zhang Wang goes by Joseph. He's like, he was like, he was expecting me. He's like, come with me. <laughs> we, we walked to his office. He's like, sit down, show me your palms. And he like did some kind of reading of my pulse. He's like, stick out your tongue. Uh, and then I, yeah. <laughs> and he was just reading and assessing me. And then he went and told me this whole story at a mannequin with all those, the energy points and everything. And he was trying to explain to me in layman's terms, because right. keep in mind, I'm small town, Alberta boy, grew up on the farm. You know, I didn't know any of this stuff. Like I literally had the whispers of my, my grandfather birds and you actually believe in this stuff. <laughs> Real. <Right. laughs> that was my best impression of grandpa bird. All my family watching right and I was laughing because that was him. <laughs> so I go in there and wouldn't you know it? He just like, you are broken. I'll fix you. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> fix this before I fix this. And he went on to talk about the yin and the yawn and um, talked about, you know, how emotional and energy trauma or things like that can really affect and manifest the physical body. So I want to share this story for anyone who's just marveled or thought about it or tried it mm -hmm. or just at wit's end to try something different. I swear it changed my life. And the moment on the table where he's like sticking the needles in and he had the same process as you, Dr. Sarah, where he started near the ankles to kind of ground you. That's how you mm -hmm. explain it. You gotta yeah. Ground. And working your way up and whatever he did when he stuck the needle, boom, like right dead on my forehead. It was like everything that was going around me thinking just went zoop, and like right back. <laughs> and then I couldn't move. And I was there for 45 minutes and I felt like I'd slept for a week. Mm. And that experience when he finally took all the needles out and came to see me 45 minutes later he's like look in the mirror and I looked and like I was all like rosy like he's like see your chi is pink and I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it but I feel like I'm I don't even feel like a million bucks I feel like an yeah. infinite bucks and that's what I, I don't get it but I love it yeah I don't get it but I love it yeah. and then the funniest part of the story is I'm walking back to my office and like all of a sudden people are like turning their heads to stare like everybody and it was just odd i'm like am i like bleeding from the ear <laughs> from from like the needles well, he, he took out of the ear it, yeah. anyway it was just it was different things were different like i felt at peace i felt at a higher like energy level mm -hmm. i was vibrating higher and that was my my first experience so mm -hmm. i'm gonna throw that one back over to you dr sarah what did i experience in that moment <laughs> you know and i think that takes me back to explaining you know the mind body experience and some people have that aha moment with just one treatment and some people it it's like anything can take practice right and you know one of the things we know that acupuncture does very well is it increases your blood flow, right? So that's opening all of these channels that need oxygen and nutrition to function. And it's amazing what that can do to your body. And when it, when it gives you blood flow to the brain or your conscious thoughts or brings you down to a calm level where you can actually shut off that conscious, it's less about what you're thinking about your day or your life and more about what Greg just experienced where you know, he does actually a really good job of putting it into words, but you probably couldn't put it all into words because it was a feeling. 
It was. It was yeah. a feeling, just like the Boston song. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's me throwback to rock and roll. Oh, always a throwback to rock and roll. Yeah. But I mean, you know, when you approach it from a traditional Chinese medicine um, or an Eastern way of treatment, uh, you know, we look at it as energy or more of life force, right? And, you know, and then I have that other side of me, which is more my my official training, where it's more of the Western approach as a, a medical professional. And so, you know, there's a few ways of explaining it. And I I'm starting to really go down that pathway of, of wanting to, to understand more of that, you know, feeling side of it and and take the science out of it per se, you know, not, not disregard it, but to, to, you know, just have those experiences with people like you had and that connection. Yeah. And I think it's really great where you're explaining that you have a Western training background and uh, also the Eastern side of things. It is hard for um, people who are coming in for treatment to actually be able to go, to take the leap from going from Western medicine to Eastern approaches. because And so just for people, a little bit of understanding is that Western me- medicine is very biomechanical. It's like, if this part hurts, that's the part you're gonna go in and get treated. You know, mm-hmm. if you have a headache, we're gonna give you some pills for that. Um, Eastern medicine is really more about uh, no pain, no pain. And how are you feeling? You know, how's your energy? How is your chi? Uh, so you don't need to go for 5,000 tests necessarily. It's to take a look at a couple of things and then ask you how you're feeling, like how's your sleep? And then they yeah. actually listen to your answer. If you say my sleep isn't good, then they go, oh, well, what's going on with that? And then if you're, um, uh, you know, and if your energy is, if your energy, if your sleep's good and your energy is good dr- throughout the day to do the tasks that you need to do, then that's considered that your energy is good. You know, if, yeah. if not, then that's what they look at. So it's not like, oh, let's send out 5,000 tests. It's like, let's figure out your energy, your chi, your prana. Yeah. yeah it's your life force. Uh, exactly. Very, very different. Yeah. yeah. And it's so beautiful because it can be that simple. Yes. Um, you know, and I, I do have, you know, of course, the majority of how I treat and my patients are, you know, this hurts here, like you're talking about, but you know what, I don't necessarily sit there and, and explain the entire science behind it with every patient. So, you know, you're feeling, you're still feeling that blood flow and you're still feeling that energy that it gives you. And, um, you know, regardless of everyone's experience or how many appointments it takes for whatever you're coming for you know, people often will get off the table and just feel happier. Um, cause it's really affecting, um, you know, our, our natural hormones, our happy hormones, our serotonin, it's increasing our serotonin levels and, uh, really focusing on, um, the effects of endorphins, right. So our, our natural painkillers. So people get off the table and sometimes they don't know what they feel or why they feel it, but they're a little bit happier, a little bit more pep in their step. So, um, you know, and it affects the nervous system with all that juicy blood flow that we're getting. So I have patients that laugh. I have patients that cry. I have patients that want to talk a lot and patients that are like, don't talk to me at all. So, (laughs) And and that's great. Like, it's totally fine. It's like, let's honor that. And let's just see, you know, let's focus on that. And how can that make you feel? And especially in a time, you know, I know we were talking about this the other day, Leah and Greg with, you know, how busy the world is right now and, and how many people do, do acupuncturists see right now that are just, just stressed or focusing on, you know, anxiety, depression, mental health, right? Um, it, it's such a great time to yourself to experience what acupuncture can actually do for your mind and do for your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to echo what you just said right there. And maybe this is a call out to all the people that I know, not only advisors in my shop, there's a lot of them, um, if they're ever feeling this pinch, but this goes to anyone that's been mm-hmm. through 2020, whether they have a sales job, whether they lost their job, whether we talked about the compression in the family, the decimation of the family unit. Yeah. If you're looking for another treatment or another solution, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to reach out and just how I identified my one is, is again, I, I, I saw Jean Wong when I first saw him, I'm like, there's something about him. And then same thing with you. I was in just getting a massage and chiropractic treatment and you walked by and I had, I know Dr. Mark had mentioned that uh, he had added you to the clinic. And I'm like, mm-hmm. ah, I saw the same thing in you that I saw in, in Joseph. Well, thank you. So I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this out again. And again, <laughs> after the treatment, it was just like that whole energy level came back. Yeah. So, and one neat thing, the very first treatment, you were sharing such a really 
inspirational story. So going, I want to just rewind the clock. Like you're a <laughs> bobsled athlete and all around athlete. I want the audience to share a little bit about that story. And how did you get into what you're in today? Well, so my whole life, I basically, you know, been an athlete, uh, varsity soccer, varsity volleyball. And that was really my path was just, you know, I didn't, I wasn't so focused on the education or the career, but it was, Hey, where can I go that I can play the most top, you know, team I can. So um, when I was graduating from my undergrad, I was terrified because I was like, how do you compete in sports? What do you do next? And people are like, well, you get a job. And <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So what? yeah, so that reality hit really fast. And um, I had a professor that was uh, one of my business profess- professors, and he said, well, I was going to school in Nova Scotia. And he was like, if you are going back to you know, live in Alberta, in Calgary, why don't you try out for the bobsled team? They're always recruiting female athletes, mm-hmm. you know, just to, you know, get more depth in that program. And so it kind of started out as a big joke. And of course, everybody talks about Cool Runnings, the movie. And, right. you know, I was like, you know, I'm, I think I'm really going to try. And um, much to my parents' dismay, I've always been a bit of an adrenaline junkie, right? So um, I tried out for the team and they told me I was too small. So when you tell me that I can't do something, I'll probably try really hard to do it. And (laughs) so I got a coach and I gained a bunch of weight and and ended up making the national development team, which um, quickly led into the next steps of uh, making the Europa Cup team and and getting to compete on the stage in Europe. So um, that comes with a few injuries because I had never really lifted weights before, let alone, you know, gone down a icy slope at 148 kilometers an hour, which was the fastest I think I ever went in Whistler. So it was, it was something where your team chiropractor, who also does acupuncture became, you know, a really integral part of your team. So that led me to, you know, stepping outside of what I thought a career could look like and thinking, well, this, this could be a really good fit for me. So, um, you know, as Vancouver Olympics came and went and I didn't make the racing team there, it, it became something where I applied to Cairo school and, and did acupuncture at the same time. So, um, that kind of led into where sport became the best thing I could have ever done because your education is kind of next level speed and weight in terms of just how busy you are. So, um, that led me down that pathway of acupuncture in Cairo. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. The, uh, it's funny, the, uh, athletic thing, you know, we all share that in common. Greg was a, you know, pretty elite athlete also. Uh, so was I, and it is this adrenaline thing. And we were talking about this when we first, when we first chatted about one of the problems with, uh, people who've been really athletic though, uh, yeah. is that they actually have lots of problems with adjusting to normal life because you're so used to having that ding, 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 going off in your head all the time. The, 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 um, dr- dr- uh, drop basically of yeah. all the adrenaline. And so yeah. the, these dumps. So part of learning chiropractic and acupuncture, uh-huh. if you use your own skills to actually level out that need to have those spiky kind of highs. Sort of <laughs> working, on, I, working on it. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm always going to be working on that to be honest. Um, but it's, it's yeah, when I, you know, I'll go for chiropractic treatments and acupuncture treatments. And, and again, it brings you back to just some, some sort of focus and some sort of connection with your body, because we do, we get on that overdrive, right. And we're always looking for that next hit. And I know Leah, you had, had mentioned that with your sport and Greg as well. And, and even with Leah, you training other athletes, um, there's always kind of like, what's the next thing. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think if we're being honest here, that's always going to be a work in progress for me. Um, and it, it always, it always turns into being about something like as I I'm getting older, it's about, you know, what's next in terms of my career, how can I further that acupuncture outreach or that Cairo outreach? And then I, I think my internal battle right now is having a very creative side as well. So a kind of a scientific, business side and then the other side is just very creative so it's 
it's, you know, probably allowing me to have that time to focus on how do you proceed? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got joking about uh, our doctors growing up in our little small town of Viking. We had the greatest Irish doctors ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had another doctor that actually did acupuncture, Dr. Bennett, yes. I believe it was. Yeah, Dr. So Dr. Bennett. That's where the conversation went. Cause yeah. uh, you know, I love uh, having coffee with mom and I asked, I asked her, I said, you, you know, what would be interesting for you to hear on the show? Like from a wellness perspective or health. And she's like, I've always wanted to know about acupuncture. And mm. then we got talking that Dr. Bennett was probably the one that referred her when he may have, yeah. he, I don't know if he had the practice in Viking, but he definitely moved when they moved from Viking to Edmonton, they, that was what he was doing. So long time ago. Yeah. When the earth was green. Now, when, earth was, uh, when earth was green. <laughs> it's our other song of the day. <laughs> but I, I think it's important. I want to share another story. So I traveled to Houston, Texas uh, around January of last year. And I come back and I was so sick. So oh, sick. Yeah. It was like I had the flu crossed with the strep throat, but I went in for testing. It wasn't strep throat. So here, lo and behold, this whole COVID thing hits in March and everyone in the world starts to know what this global pandemic is about. And I could have sworn I had COVID. So I went to go see Dr. Zhang Wang and I went in there for my assessment. And same thing, he, I made he me made, uh, stick out my tongue. <laughs> He did, but then I, it really baffled him. He's never seen this before. So he has really taken time to assess me. It took a good 45 minutes. He even drew like little grids, like on my radial pulse on both sides. And he's like, Feel this. And he's like, this is not right. He's like, I need to, I need to fix you. Like you're broken again. He used yeah, again. That, no, right. You're broken. I need to fix you. <laughs> But if that was COVID, and again, there's no way to test it if I had it back then, if it was, and I swear all the symptoms that we've heard about what COVID is, I swear I had it. And wouldn't you know it, after one treatment, the headache, the sore throat, the sinus problems, everything that came with it, the, the heaviness on the chest, the next day when I woke up, no word of a lie, I can't make this up, it was gone. Mm. No medication, no nothing. I felt like infinite bucks again, not a million bucks, mm -hmm. infinite bucks. So if there was something to be said about that experience that set me off then, by the time actually the lockdown uh, had happened, I'm just like, I, I think I had that thing. Yeah, I'd have had that thing. <laughs> and acupuncture, yeah. I swear, fixed it. So that's my testimony to the world for your practice. Mm -hmm. If that indeed is what helped realign me and my energy to heal myself and my body, it worked. So I just wanted to share that because then fast forward the clock, I haven't been sick since when I met you, Dr. Sarah, it was just more of, Hey, it's kind of like uh, getting a wheel alignment in a truck. <laughs> so, yeah. But I love how you explain it, right? Here, You're like, like a little top up. If I'm a little broken, I'm not totally broken. I just, just need a little bit of a, <laughs> and that's yeah, what I came to see you. We haven't used those words yet. You're not totally broken, <laughs> but I love it when you come in because you say, I just need a little top up and you know that. And I think that becomes part of the practice where, you know, people, you can feel when you're a little off or you can feel when you need, you know, preventative or maintenance care. And, you know, depending on how you look at it, regardless of how you look at it, um, you know, your body is really good at healing itself. That's just a fact about the human body. Yeah. So, you know, if we can give it something so, you know, where it's very non-invasive to, to top that up, like you say, Greg, it's, it would be wonderful if people could be, you know, open-minded to trying it because I will say, you know, I was once in the position too, where a total fear of, of needles and I transfer that to the, to acupuncture and, you know, I, I had a, an initial, I think it was my very first acupuncture treatment wasn't the most positive experience because I had a lot of anxiety that I had created on my own around the treatment. So, but I did, I went back and now I'm providing it for others. So, um, you know, it, it's definitely something where I, I would love for people to know that it, it's, it's not painful. Um, it's just a, it's a great way for your body to use its own mechanism of, of treating itself and healing itself and, um, you know, using its own, you know, immune system to get stronger. And there are so many other benefits that everyone will experience on an individual level too. Yeah. It's incredible really when you when you unleash your own energy, how much there is there, uh, to heal everything from, yeah. from the inside. Um, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which, you know, with like your own practices. So it's, yeah, it's, it can be pretty powerful stuff. And, and, you know, and then there are those patients that you just come in because you, you tore your rotator cuff or you have a strained muscle and, and it's all about, you know, nerve nerves, muscles, connective tissue. Um, I do a lot of electroacupuncture, which Hmm. is where I add a current to the needle and we contract the muscle to increase that nerve muscle communication so that the body and the muscles are ready to function Um, which is an awesome way to treat athletes or weekend warriors or injuries. So that's, you know, those are, Greg asked me the other day, you know, what, do you have a couple of cases that you might want to share? And, um, you know, one of them, my favorite that I can think of was this lady in her seventies and she was having um, nerve pain down her leg. She had tried everything. She had had a bunch of imaging done. And of course, a bit of degeneration at that age, which can affect the nerves, but she was just kind of on her last straw of what do I do? Um, getting very depressed about it. And anyways, we tried, we tried some electroacupuncture. So really talking and communicating to the nerves and she was instantly improved when she got off the table. And she's one of those ones like you, Greg, where she just comes in for a little top up. Yeah, wow. That's great. Wow. I have a friend who yeah. uh, is an ex NHL hockey player who had been rammed into the boards uh, as a young and ha- was hospitalized. Like he was a, yeah. So anyway, 30 years later, he's still walking around, you know, like this with his shoulders up in his ears. And right. I had said to him, like, what kind of treatments did you go for? What did they do for you? And he was like, well, you know, the regular go to the doc, blah, blah. And I said, well, have you ever been for acupuncture? So he was 63, so he's like 63 years old. I said, have you ever been for acupuncture? He's like, no. no. Went for two treatments, two, and two. all of the pain was gone. So he'd walked around like that since he, I think he was in his early 20s or mid 20s when this injury happened. And he yeah. in that agony, agony for decades and so then they start doing stuff to pain manage mm-hmm. you know, so people, um, don't uh, with pain if you can't get it alleviated some way then you start doing things to manage pain that are unhealthy so mm-hmm. uh, drinking a lot of people drink mm-hmm. in order to manage physical pain because they just don't know what else to do right. um, and so if that describe if that's you <laughs> people if that's any of you who've been dealing with physical pain um, by you know and that you can't get relief either through medication or through, you know, alcohol or other drugs um, to, you know, take the edge off. I just really encourage you all that this is a very natural way of actually getting your health um, and happiness back because those things just mask your happiness and mask your glow and mask actually what you're supposed to be doing here on this beautiful planet during this ride. And so if there's a way to be able to relieve the pain and then recapture your life, that's an excellent gift to give to yourself in 2021. Hey, yeah, that's really well said, Leah. Yeah, you bring up a good point about that. You know, you think of all the ones that are addicted to painkillers too. Oh, like, yeah, so many. Like if I rewind the clock back to Jean Wong, that was circa 2016. I have never taken a painkiller since. Like mm-hmm. it just, I come in for the top ups wow. to see you, and I just, I don't need it. And you know, you think of all the other damaging effects that that stuff can do to you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could go off into the weeds in that one, but for <laughs> sure. And I think it's important to actually talk about it because when you're um, drugged out, I haven't been on any medication of any kind for 20 years, nothing. And like, so yes, nothing and not a sick day. So either not a headache, not a stomach ache, nothing that hasn't been sports related. Uh, Then I'll maybe have some physical pain, but other than that, nothing. And so when people go like, how can you actually be well all the time? Well, because I decided I was going to be well without medication and that there's ways to figure that out. But for me, Qigong has been a big um, benefit in my life. And, you know, moving out of the athletic world where mechanically my body at 45 years old was going, you can't keep doing box jumps and burpees, Mattinson. (laughs) (laughs) Time out. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's right. And so I say uh, there was life before Qigong and then life after Qigong. And Qigong is energy mastery. So for people who don't know what it is, it's energy mastery, but it's in the field of Chinese medicine. And uh, as is acupuncture, as is massage, so and as you know, Chinese herbal medicines. And so I know quite a bit about acupuncture and, and just this kind of it's a neat thing when people um, 
are blocked up to the way that Qigong and acupuncture can work hand in hand is that if people go to acupuncture and they have anxiety before that treatment, they can actually do a little bit of Qigong to alleviate the, um, through, you know, spinal cord breathing, uh, or those kinds of really simple breathing exercises to relax before treatment. And, uh, then after, uh, the acupuncture, if their bodies are feeling a little bit better, they can do a bit more of a Qigong practice because their body's fluidity is better. Their mobility is better. Their movement and their energy is better. So they can actually um, be able to do more things. I've had clients who've been able to actually get off of all kinds of other treatments, um, chiropractor included, because they've, you know, done acupuncture and Qigong together. Uh, so when they've been relying on getting through their work day because they sit at the desk all day and they uh, they rely on their their uh, chiropractor and massage in particular to get through the week, they've got you know people lined up at the door to do those treatments, and then they start to do instead acupuncture qigong and take over that health and well being from the inside out, and then they don't need the treatments anymore. They go, oh my god, it's like I didn't even realize how much of my time I was spending getting treatments for things that weren't actually healing my body. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a very big difference between masking and healing. Uh, so oh, can you absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So in, in uh, acupuncture, what is it that is actually energetically fixed? So when people go, what's the magic of this acupuncture th business? Hey, that's such a good question. Do you know the answer? <laughs> Well, the align I think it's the alignment of energy systems and the release of that life force energy through your body. So the alignment of, of energy. And if anyone doesn't know what energy is, it's like if you clap your hands together, everyone play along. You can feel it. Together. Yeah. And then just feel and go, oh, that is, that's your chi. That's your life yeah. force energy. And yeah. so it can be blocked up for a number of reasons, but the acupuncture, yeah. when you've got lots of things out of alignment in your uh, mind, body, spirit, and in your physical body. And when you get into pain, it's like you do more, um, you're more tight and you're more curled up and you're more not taking in ni nice, you know, deep breaths. Mm -hmm. uh, you just go more into a protective mechanism, yeah. which actually, you know, locks up your energy, but tightens up your muscles and blocks your blood flow and, and starts to affect everything, you know, from your stress levels to your sleep. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, um, you know, and like I said, it, it is a practice. It's, you know, for anyone listening, you know, we're telling these amazing experiences or these success stories, mm -hmm. but also not to get, you know, off route. If you feel like, Hey, I tried it. It didn't work for me. You know, I tried bobsleigh once and it, you know, it was <laughs> maybe not the best <laughs> experience <laughs> ever, but yeah, <laughs> I had a couple big crashes too, but for whatever reason I went back. So right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's really important to, to tell people that if they're not understanding it on one level, not to, to, you know, be strayed from the fact that it might help them on a totally different level, one that they can understand mm -hmm. and, um, something that means something to them. So it's, it's just one of those treatments where, you know, I, I even just have, have parents come in for a little bit of quiet time, because like you said, Leah, you know, you're, we're working from home and space is an issue. So, you know, if, if we're not taking care of our home, our bodies, which is the only place we really have to live in, you know, everything else gets affected in a negative way. And that's the way we communicate with loved ones and, and in our jobs and our professional lives too. So, you know, even just finding something that you can go and you can connect with yourself yeah. is, I would highly recommend just a starting point mm -hmm. of that. And, you know, if there's aches and pains as well, or you're looking for some healing, then that's, of course, another pathway for it too. So nice, nice. Well, we had a big aha moment as well. So going back, I want to just dial back to the Qigong thing. So we were blessed with two amazing gym teachers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Ping and Chow Pon. So Leah, do you oh, want to yeah. that why we had such an elite force <laughs> of athletes, like from the basketball team to volleyball to track and field? Like, Yeah, well, I was thinking about, because uh, Ping in particular, mm -hmm. that he... Uh, from the time I can recall going to gym, so grade one gym class, we'd all be lined up and doing Qigong moves. Now that I look back, I go, oh my gosh, we were doing Qigong then. <laughs> like, totally. It's like, in gym. In gym. In gym. Yeah. And so, yeah, we were way more um, flexible 
uh, we had way more strength, faster speed, like all of the athletes that came out of that little town yeah. were very, we, we kick some butt. And uh, for many, many decades while those teachers were there, but the basics were really, it's like being rooted and grounded, being flexible and mobile, having, you know, good energy, inhaling really deep breaths, being loose in the shoulders. Um, yeah, it was just, um, but started young. And I'm also, I was, you know, worked in the school system. So my, I know that it wasn't curriculum. Like that wasn't necessarily standard Alberta school curriculum. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm like, but it well, worked, but it worked. So it was yeah. very, they were, yeah. So we were exposed to the Qigong. I don't even know if he would know that that's what he was doing. But as I look at the I'm movements, sure um, uh, as a Qigong teacher and, uh, whose master, so my master's Lee Holden and then grandmaster's Mantak Chia and part of our, we do medical Qigong in our line of things, but they're fun and playful. Like that's my Qigong practices, fun and playful and medical Qigong where other practices are not like that necessarily. Uh, but this, our ping pawn was definitely mm -hmm. fun. Like he made it fun. Yeah. yeah. And he coached my mom and dad. So dad's laughing right now. All those little moves that <laughs> Do, like all the moves totally Qigong. there you go and why we were again such an elite force the town of holden and riley and tofield didn't know it hit him every time our track team come into town that's right yeah you guys had to step up but you didn't know why we now did. we do that we many did. years later we did yeah. not. We but did. It, i mean it does something that energy and that blood flow and and even just feeding off of one another's energy that does something for that does something for the body it does something for a professional it does something for an athlete yeah. so that mental strength is, is very understated, I think too. So are you noticing anybody coming in with issues from wearing masks that they're dealing with anxiety or they're dealing with uh, lung issues that they they're not getting the oxygen requirements? I haven't really seen anything directly with lung issues. Um, I would say that we're not getting the breath that we're used to getting. I would say the biggest thing is we're shallow breathing. So we're using a lot of our respiratory muscles, our, our neck muscles, our chest muscles. We're not breathing anymore from our diaphragms and we're not taking in that conscious deep breath. Mm -hmm. If you, if you check in with yourself, you'll realize that you're, you're just shallow breathing or you're breathing from here. And that creates this tension in the neck and the shoulders. And, and there's a lot of that. So there's a lot of that. And then it, it really is affecting sleep, sleep patterns. So it's, um, you know, whether it be from the masks or just the situation that we're finding each other in, it's, um, it's, it's every day it's daily. So, and then of course there's the, the acne and that sort of thing that comes along with the masks as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have known that would have been a word? The mask knee or whatever. The mask knee. Yeah. yeah. I had a big yeah. pimple in my nose. Oh. Well, I don't even own I haven't a mask. Haven't had one since grade There's eight. My <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. That. Hang on. <laughs> so on my other treatment too. Now I'm gonna what, rewind the clock again. So I'm sitting there lying. I got like pin cushion, Greg here on the on the table, and I'm just like totally zen right out. But I got to hear some more of your story. Like you had a really kind of neat trip. Uh, and you mentioned one place that I've always, always, always wanted to go. I don't know why I'm drawn to go there, but Machu Picchu, Peru. And you mm. got to go. And that was how it's long a, ago? I think it was back in 2017. I went and uh, that was way out of my comfort zone. And I would recommend it to anyone. Um, I was going through a really hard time. I guess it was probably a breakup at the time. And one of my very dear friends, Riley, he, um, he had called me at Christmas time and he said, Hey buddy, like we're going, we're going on this trip. And I said, okay. <laughs> so he, he invited me to go and he caught me at a really good time. It was really out of my comfort zone. And basically it was called a pilgrimage and it was with a group of people and we're going to Peru and we're going to take a couple of weeks and we're going to experience all these different weird, wonderful things that may help you get more in touch with yourself. And um, it certainly did. It was really out of my comfort zone. I think Greg and I were talking, you know, I grew up in a religious family, very Christian uh, church going. And so anything that was outside of that kind of just feels a little bit or felt a little bit off. But I've also been a very spiritual person and very open to to that side of myself. And so this felt like a wonderful opportunity to just leave the world behind and go to this new world that I wasn't even on my radar to travel to. 
and, um, and in a really safe way of doing it. So I got to go there and it, it is an amazing country with amazing people. Um, I think there's 12, at least 12 UNESCO heritage sites in Peru. So people travel from all over the world there because the energy levels are just so strong and, and it's such a wonderful place to go and connect to yourself, um, connect to that mind body connection, which we talk about sometimes and just the land, you know, which is one of those, um, you know, you had asked me, I think, how do you ground yourself at the end of the, of the day? And, yeah. and it's, it's through nature. And if you, if you ever want to experience that Peru is, is such a beautiful place to go get lost and find yourself. That's what I, the way I explain it. <laughs> it's a little harder to ground here right now with the snow on the ground. <laughs> yes, a little it's frozen. <laughs> frozen tundra. Slight little less appealing than yeah. yes, Machu Picchu. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it's nice to hear somebody talking uh, uh, openly about spirituality. And I think that that's an, a really neat thing that's happening right now. Um, astrologically, it's like we're moving out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, for those of you who follow anything astrological or astronomical. And so what that means is that the last 2000 years have really have been about the uh, sacrifice of Christ and, you know, being a sacrificial lamb. The next 2000 years are going to be about higher consciousness. And so as we move out of that old s sort of story, it's really about the new higher consciousness of how do we become Christ-like um, in our behaviors. And so Christic is, you know, compassionate, loving, kind, all of those things that um, that we can learn and take from the lessons of that 2000 year ago history as spirituality is really about living um, purely from that space of whatever your spirit is saying uh, mm -hmm. and intended for you, your journey and your path. And you've had quite the twists and turns on your path, you know, cause you come from a small town, you come from this family that's, you know, religious, you, you know, thought you'd be doing one thing and then you're doing another thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on the twists and turns, there's no pun intended with the bobsled. Right. I was like, I have actually. <laughs> Thanks, you think, Leah. <laughs> you're going to weave that in there uh, somewhere. Weave it in. Exactly. <laughs> All the twists yeah. and turns. So yes. many with, right. with numerous crashes in between, right? right. <laughs> you know, it's, and that's just such a great little metaphor for life. And um, yeah. And in speaking to that Peru trip, you know, I, uh, one of the ladies that was organizing it, um, I was somewhat on the fence and she called me and she said, listen, I don't, I can't say what you're going to get out of it, but she said, what I do know, this is the one thing I could tell you is that you will not be the same person when you come back. And, you know, it just, it felt like when I was there, I, I let my heart open a little bit more. I let a lot of things run off my shoulders. And one of the things that I feel like I just, I couldn't, I can't shut off since I got back is just, is listening to my heart and, and listening to my body and listening to, you know, that inner voice uh, when something's really right or when something's really wrong. And I think sometimes we get really good at shutting that off and somehow overriding it and, and being able to basically sink back into that and start trusting and loving yourself again was the biggest thing I got out of that. And, and then I think, you know, you, you really can basically, you love yourself, but then you, you basically have more of that type of person come into your life. So, so it's been fascinating. Yeah. And there's a complete difference between the monkey mind of the blah, 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 and the of the external chatter of the brain and the internal voice of wisdom. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And it's still difficult, you know, we're in such a fast paced world and we're 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 in a, a time of, of our lives where, you know, we don't know what's coming next. So a lot of us are in survival mode and and I think it, there's not a better time than to just reconnect with yourself and, and learn what that mind body can really look like and how to strengthen those loving relationships and, and listen to, you know, what, what your body needs and what your heart needs. Yeah. Yeah. Now from a financial perspective, I'm going to dive in a little bit. So we all seen this on our group benefits plans. Those that are fortunate to have group benefits mm -hmm. plans or health spending accounts, you can go for these types of treatments and it's covered. So again, I'm going to just put it out there to everybody listening and watching today. 
again, if you're feeling some of these things, whether you're sick, whether you're hurt, you're injured, you're, you know, stress, we've named so many of them. The sleep was a big one too. Mm -hmm. If I go back to 2016, I wasn't sleeping. When you don't sleep, it really messes with your head. But uh, Dr. Wang Zhang, he just, again, he focused on how am I going to make you sleep? He's like, you're going to sleep like a baby. And he was right. Whatever treatment he did. Oh man, it was like nine hours of solid, like deep sleep mm -hmm. uh, for the time after. And he's like, come back again, 2.30 next time, next week. And again, come for a tune up. But again, it was just, I was so fascinated. So again, telling my story, small town, farm boy, you know, played hockey all his life and then tried this so many moons later, it was mm -hmm. so neat to experience what I experienced and how I just come up for uh, uh, my ongoing treatment uh, with you, Dr. Sarah. It's just, again, just that little bit of top up of energy. And I can feel when I leave that clinic, it's just like buzzing again. And I, that's the only way I can, yeah. <laughs> word I can use to describe it uh, in my, my layman's term. Yeah. That's a good descriptor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I think too, like, just to speak to that a little bit, it's, you know, it, it's, it's important to maybe get a, you know, referral. So maybe not just randomly picking somebody out of the phone book, but, you know, it's important to, to know who you're going to and, and what their background is and, and making sure that you, you connect with, with that practitioner and that on a, a level of trust too. So yeah, good. And is there any results uh, for people who are suffering with uh, neurological problems that you can uh, maybe state or, or talk about people who are maybe um, confused, people who are having trouble with decision making, executive functioning things, um, mood? Well, mood for sure. I mean, it's, you know, when we go down that more of that route of the traditional Chinese medicine, that's slightly out of my scope, which I'm practicing right now, but we do know that, you know, those natural endorphins and that natural serotonin. So our hormones are happy hormones. It just, it naturally is boosted with any acupuncture treatment. It's just one of those lovely side effects, if you will. Um, so we, we know that that, that has an effect on it. And if you look at the research, there's, there's a lot behind exactly what you're talking about and, and how to get people off of their medications. Um, so it's, you know, and if, if people have questions, I think it's really important to go to their practitioner, even if it's just for a conversation and not a treatment, you know, and make sure that you are being paired with somebody where that is their scope of practice and where that is something that they've worked on before. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I guess that's the, is the answer is if you're even feeling a little bit hmm, like, I don't really know what's wrong with me. I just know that I'm not the energizer bunny that I want to be. And yeah. this is like, not that I used to be, but that I want to be, you know, this yeah. is that the master your life question is who are you right now? And who is it you want to be? How do you want your body to be? How do you want your temple of your body to feel? And, you know, do you want to be enthusiastic and energized or do you want the opposite of that? And so this is that an opportunity to have a really tangible experience that's an in-body experience. Mm -hmm. So you can feel the results and the effects and the benefit or, or the side effects of it right away. And that's a um, sometimes better for people who are trying to navigate their way out into feeling a particular way than because there's a roadmap there. So thank you. Yeah. Dr. Sarah, I think that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. For giving Absolutely. people a bigger understanding of what's, you know, available too, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to, to just get across in words over, uh, yeah. you know, a podcast. And, and that's why I say, you know, I would really encourage people to do their own research and, and find their own, pathway to healing, whatever that may be. But there's, you know, there's a lot of power behind this tiny little pin. And, you know, I was one of those people that was very fearful of it. And now I'm, I'm such an advocate of it. And I get to see the power of it and the healing properties, the healing powers of it daily, mm -hmm. um, whether that be some of my professional athletes that I work with, or, you know, just, just a weekend warrior, or, you know, like Greg, <laughs> well, dads, someone awesome dads like, with lots of kids, like awesome, <laughs> awesome dad that needs energy, and, that's, that's and right. dads and moms that need energy. That's yeah. and weird. where you're giving, you're giving a lot every day. And if you could even just look at it as, hey, this is just this is your space mm -hmm. to work with your practitioner, where you might even have to start learning just how to how to give to yourself, even if it's just that one 45 minutes to an hour that you might be getting with that practitioner or alone in a room with acupuncture needles and 
some chill music. It's, I, it, it could go a long way, especially today. So. Yeah. Yeah. So one other question, I guess we're going to ask, are, are you broken? <laughs> so there's another method yeah. to are, fix you. Am I broken? <laughs> am I yeah. broken? Yeah. So Dr. Sarah, how do people get a hold of you? Is it like Instagram the best way you tell us? Yeah. So I, I would say either email or Instagram. Um, I am working out of a clinic right now. Um, my hope, you know, maybe something to kind of put out into the the world right now is that maybe I get to kind of do a little bit of part-time from home and a little bit of part-time from a clinic. So um, I can really give more of myself in a, in a bigger capacity uh, from work from home and, and really focus on some of that energy work. Um, so it's yeah. Instagram or, or email is perfect. It's great. So. Okay. Well, we'll put yeah. that in the show Yes, notes. we sure will. And yeah. I, to your point, there's if there's thousands or tens of thousands of people looking for acupuncturists, you can go through your, um, do your research online and see who it is that you can connect with and then reach out to them and, and see if they are going to be providing the treatment that you really want or need. One of the things too, I want to just put out there to people in the last few minutes is that uh, the reason I took Qigong was because I was given a diagnosis of something that's incurable. And the doctor said, neurologist said, come back when you're symptomatic. And I was just like, what? What kind of, what kind of solution is that? So, but the good thing is, is that it's led down this other, you know, health pathway of going, uh, how do I be well, which is different than how do I not be sick? And so in the, how do I be well you know, category of how do I take care of my brain? How do I make sure my body's functioning? How do I know that I'm in alignment that the Eastern medicine stuff has been an absolute uh, godsend in my life, in my family's life, you know, so the uh, being able to take care of your health and from before you get sick yeah. um, is another thing. I think that going to acupuncture, when you start noticing things are not quite right, and you can't quite figure out what it is. It's just another um, way of getting feedback from somebody else. Because when you're uh, when you're trying to understand what's going on with your body, it's hard to do that if you don't actually know how to communicate with yourself and how to really observe what's going on. But when you're in a dialogue with another human being, which is what an acupuncturist can do, is that they would be able to say to you, like, how are you feeling? And then you can report. And then they can continue to ask questions. Um, where if you're just doing that on your own, sometimes you're not honest with your own answers. Sometimes you don't know what's wrong with you because it could be a mental thing. It could be emotional. It could be a physical thing, but it's hard to diagnose yourself. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really good, um, a good way to get feedback from somebody that is practicing like uh, from a bioenergetic perspective versus a biomechanical, you're bringing both to the table uh, for sure. But if someone's going to just a straight up acupuncturist that is only doing the Eastern side of things, they'll only be bringing the bioenergetic thing. So it's just, it's mm -hmm. yeah. An interesting juxtaposition. Right? Yeah. But it's such a good point. Leah is, you know, understanding the wellness side of it. Right. And, and we only know what we know. So when we get to talk to other people and I get to, to speak with you two, you know, I I've already learned so much from both of you and, and so it, it's so important to, you know, get out of that comfort zone because that really is as cliche as we probably all heard it. You know, these wonderful things await you at the edge of your comfort zone, whether it be traveling somewhere else or hurling yourself down an icy slope, like, you know, <laughs> or going for more education where you're, you know, you're learning something brand new that can really help towards, you know, your health and your wellness, mm -hmm. your overall well-being. Because the body is is so powerful, it it has so many capabilities of self healing, and it's just tapping into that that natural resource. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, I've been made a believer over these last several years, and that that whole glow you see that's real, yeah. and the glow that I see with you that's real. <laughs> and again, yeah. it, it's just tapping into that whole yeah. See. It's not, it's not a halo by any means, but it's a glow. It's not just your lighting, Greg. Oh, tell <laughs> not just my lighting. Yeah. Cover, Jerry, cover your ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's his halo. Yeah. <laughs> 
so good so much fun so much fun (laughs) always fun in the studio it is always fun in the studio so any any kind of um things that you would recommend kind of last minute thing that you would recommend for people that they could do on their own to find an acupuncture point that they could use to either alleviate stress or you know practice a little on themselves before they come in to see you yeah well one of the things for sure is you know before you even get into an acupressure point or an acupuncture point is just focus on your breathing if you even have 10 seconds in the car or you know if you're driving from a to b is just sit up straight and roll your shoulders back and just understand what it's like to take even just count out 10 deep breaths from your diaphragm and really fill your lungs and then breathe out so in through the nose out through the mouth and you know, remind yourself, you know, if you think of it just throughout the day, give yourself 10 breaths in that moment. Mm -hmm. And we'll realize pretty quickly, you know, how good that feels, but also how we're actually not breathing. (laughs) So, you know, that's such a good place to start. And then, you know, once you start to, to learn or maybe research acupressure points, you know, one of the ones I talk about the most is um, a large intestine or LI4, which is just in between the thumb and the first finger there and, and putting some pressure in through those, those points. And it's probably going to be really tender and it's probably going to be quite sore on people, but that's a really good one for um, headaches, neck pain, stress relief. So it's, it's also just kind of makes you aware of touch and almost, you know, when we're talking about grounding is just just holding that pressure and, and breathing. So it's, um, it's so understated, you know, even just the power of touch or a a treatment where you're, you're getting that, that interaction with another human, especially right now. So (laughs) yeah, especially right now, that's exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. When people are doing belly breathing, just encourage you to put your hand on your belly and feel it expand like a basketball again, because we've been so uh, encultured to hold our breath and suck your tummy in. Don't let anyone see that you've got a belly for God's sake, yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So we want to see your belly when you're breathing. That's, yeah, we want we to see. Yeah. Your, if we don't see your belly, you're not doing it right. <laughs> doing it right. And a lot of people will say to me, wow, Leah, it's like, I've been reverse breathing for my whole life <laughs> for the last 30 years. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, and isn't that amazing? Like something as simple as breathing that we're, our body does without thought it, it, it's amazing. It's something that simple where we're just, we're just not doing it properly and it can give you a lot of relief and, and a lot of realization of, you know, what's going on in your mind and how do you quiet that down? And what do you want? Like you were saying, what do you want from your life? What's next? Mm -hmm. What's next? Cause we're creative beings. We're meant Mm -hmm. to to be creating. And when we're caught in that mind spell of shenanigans, we're not creating anything. We're just spinning around in a big old whirling disease of unhappiness and such. So it is a really excellent way to get grounded and to find your traction again and to get and navigating through your life. So what is beautifully put? What is next? What is next? next? Oh, what's next? I can't even say out loud what's next on this episode. Tell us. (laughs) <laughs> well, we always end with a song of the day. Yes, and this do. one actually hit on my drive over to the studio here to record today. And I thought it was perfect to talk about uh, energy, light, everything. And it's actually by an old rock band, Honeymoon Suite, called Stay in the Light. And it was just, I just cranked it as I've been driving here. I'm just like, okay, now I'm ready. Show, show on, three o'clock, I'm ready. So talk about energy levels. Just so here we go. This is how we're going to close out the show. Stay in the Light by Honeymoon Suite. I wake up in the morning, sky is gray and storming, buildings, bridges, city streets, still as ugly as yesterday. They used to tell me anything just to sell me, but I learn quick when I have to. I want to say it to you. I want to say it. I want to say, stay in the light. Keep your target in sight. Don't listen to fools on the run. Stay in the light. Keep your target in sight. Don't listen to fools on the run. I can look up to you. I can look right through you. I just want to see what I want to see. Things are easier that way. I stand alone, but I still need a home. I'm just playing along in this waiting game. Stay in the light. Keep your target in sight. Don't listen to fools on the run. Stay in the light. Keep your target in sight. Don't listen to fools on the run. Fools on the run. Stay in the light.
Perfect. Pause for honeymoon sweet. Honeymoon sweet. And thank you for Dr. Sarah Thorne for gracing us with your presence. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. It was such a treat to be able to to do this and talk with you guys and step out of my comfort zone again and do my first podcast and and Zoom. <laughs> and Zoom. And Zoom. Yeah. Learning it all at one time. That is so yeah. Well, we're going to just say thank you so much again. And Greg, thank you for doing this Monday morning show or Monday afternoon show and consistently bringing it about how people can spend their resources to um, having a better life and creating a better life for themselves and their family. So thank you so much for that. Um, Invite everyone to love yourselves, love each other, mind your minds. That's all for us. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.